Hi everybody, this is your host James and we have a super piece of interesting news today. Uh, in Antarctica we have this mile wide ring. Uh, it's been discovered and we most likely have the source of this mile wide ring uh, as a crater from a meteor that hit in 2004. Several of pieces of information to get through here. Uh, but the mystery of this mile wide ring in Antarctica uh, it's an it's an enormous scar uh, from something the size of a, a house, a meteorite that's about the size of a house, and it's left a crater. Um, and it's done in 2004, previously unknown until the crater was actually discovered, and they're able to track several sources uh, back to uh, two lines of evidence in 2004. Well, German scientists spotted this 1.24 mile or two kilometer ring on a routine survey flight, uh, so it was just a routine flight, they've spotted this. The scar of the broken ice was then found in Atarta's King Badoon ice shelf. Uh, scientists believe it was made by something about 10 metres wide, about 30 foot wide meteorite, and that hit in 2004, as I said. The researchers in Antarctica at that time reported seeing dust left in the sky. Uh, they also estimated it had exploded with a force of 12,000 tonnes of TNT. Uh, the infrasound, infrasound stations also picked up the explosion uh, from different parts around the globe and they matched the location to Antarctica as well. Uh, this enormous impact crater would have been created by a meteorite the size of a house smashing into Earth. Um, the size of conducting this routine aerial research flight over East Antarctica, they have noticed strange ring-like structure. It's normally flat and featureless, that's the key thing, uh, is what draw the attention. It appears to be a series of broken icebergs about two kilometers wide leaving this scar uh, and a few other small circular scars in the ice. You can see this in the photo. Uh, the researchers later found two separate studies reporting that a meteorite fell in the area in 2004. Um, and meteorites are incredibly rare and when they do fall um, they do get researched quite heavily so it's bizarre that this has escaped for a number of years. Um, so one reported uh, a series of infrasound, low-frequency sound, capable of travelling huge distances below the limit of human hearing. And that was detected on the 2nd of September 2004. Six different detectors around the world detected this infrasound thrown out by the explosion uh, when the meteorite hit. And this allowed scientists to pinpoint it somewhere over East Antarctica. How they are able to do this? Uh, six different infrasound detectors around the world. They triangulate the position. It's really not uh, easy to do. This is very high-tech stuff. Um, but they can be confident uh, that a large event has happened. And they can narrow it to hundreds or ten thousands of kilometers. Now that not may seem like very accurate. But when you locate the hundreds to ten thousands of kilometers to an area over East Antarctica. And Antarctica can be very big. There's not very many things in Antarctica, so they were safe to say that it hit the Antarctica continent. Um, perhaps that's why they didn't investigate any further. Um, but uh, they have estimated that the falling object would have landed on the ice shelf, creating the scar. The findings suggest that it was a house-sized object. Um, Dr. Christian Muller, he's a geophysicist, and he's been surveying a uh, company from Phylax, and the scientists who first spotted the impact crater. He said, we were on a routine flight, measuring flight near the coast, and we were flying above a small ice bluff. He said he looked out the window, saw one unusual structure in the ice and the surface, and that some of the broken ice looked like little icebergs, and it was very unusual, very flat ice shelf surrounded by a large, wide-shaped ring, a circular structure. He's never seen anything like that before, and his first thoughts that must have been an impact structure something like from the skies a meteorite uh, the researchers are a part of the alfred wagner institute in germany they've been flying on the basler bt 67 aircraft this is known as the polar six as you can see and it's over the area known as princess ragenheil the coast of queen Maudland and antarctica it's part of a survey to st uh, study the rock beneath the ice the aircraft which was flying from Princess Elizabeth Antarctica Research Station is equipped with ice penetrating radar and that can also map the geology beneath the ice. 
Uh, they were also used in magnetometers to measure small disturbances in the magnetic properties of the bedrock underneath the ice. That, that helps determine more about the terrain. Uh, as they flew over this Antarctica coast on 24th of December 2014, Muller spotted the large circular scar on the King Badoon ice shelf, and that forms over the ocean part. The team then returned to the site on 26th of December, taking photographs and video of the site, as well as using the laser to create this top top topographical map. And they also used radar to help build up an image of the interior on the ice shelf beneath a circular structure in the hope of seeing what lies beneath. Um, you can see this all on the map as well. And the remains of the impact site was found on the ice shelf off the Princess uh, Ragenhall coast of East Antarctica. Um, again, uh, the researchers had flown there while scientists at the Australian Davis Research Station had spotted debris from a suspected meteorite heading towards the area in 2004. Um, again, this will show you the six infrared detectors around the world. They're marked by the black triangles, as you can see. You can see how widely separated they are around the globe. Uh, and they detected the noise waves that was created by this meteor as they traveled around the world. This allowed scientists to pinpoint the exact source over East Antarctica as best as accurate as they could. And that can be seen where all the lines cross in the diagram. And uh, that's in the research paper in the journal Earth, Moon, Planet. And you can see the triangulation um, locating it to East Antarctica. Um, again, you can see the plane that they were flying in, the Polar 6 as it's known. That was flying from the Princess Elizabeth Station. They're actually still processing detail, but Dr. Graham Eagles, he's a geophysicist and leader of the Alfred Wigner Institute, the geophysical survey team at Princess Elizabeth Station. He said that it appeared that the ice and the snow on the top part of the ice shelf had been disturbed. He said that the data should help to confirm it was a meteorite, that it had caused the crater. And he said, we can't say with any confidence at this point, but he can say we found something very unusual. Um... So the big debate is, is it a new meteorite impact site discovered in Antarctica? Incredibly promising for fragments as well. Um, however, there are two very promising prior results. The infrasound data and the observed dust trail in 2004. Uh, two separate lines of evidence for the 2004 date. And they support the hypothesis that the structure could have been created by the meteorite impact and certainly support the decision to collect more data uh, for further analysis and investigation. The Australian study estimates that the body that left this debris would have measured something likely about the size of a house and that may have broken up on its way through the atmosphere. That might be why, uh, might be why there's several rings within the ring and, and multiple scarring, not just a mile wide ring. Interestingly enough though, when we, when these guys flew out, out to the circular structure on December 26th, they also spotted a number of smaller circular and circular circular structures in the ice uh, that was consistent with the conclusion of the Australian study as well as I just alluded to um, incredibly interesting this whole thing uh, an image from the NASA's aqua satellite of the meteor's dust trail an hour after it's thought to have exploded above Antarctica in 2004 the dust was spotted by Australian researchers in Antarctica at the time as well um, you know, incredible, incredible. This research by the Australian scientists after they saw the meteorite debris above Antarctica in 2004 suggested that it was around 7 to 10 metres, that's 23 to 33 feet wide, weighing about 600 to 1900 tonnes, quite heavy, <laughs> guys, quite heavy. And they even estimated that it exploded in the sky above Antarctica with a force of about 12,000 tons of TNT traveling at a speed somewhere in the region of 29,000 miles per hour. Uh, the debris that created the explosion would have then crashed into the air, it's then smashing into the ice in Antarctica. Dr. Eagle said that the team were now considering drilling down into the ice beneath the crater to see if they can find out any more what caused it. Um, hence the purpose of finding out whether this is actually a, a genuine meteorite crater or not. Dr. Eagles then said that if this object did break up before hitting the ice shelf, that perhaps some of these little pieces were not travelling with enough energy to penetrate the ice shelf, and they may have settled on it or within it, and there'd be fragments there somewhere. They may even find evidence of a dust layer in the ice surrounding the crater 
in about beneath 10 year, 10 years of snow accumulation, something like that. So they can check that in the layers. Um, they definitely think that's worth having a look at, no doubt. Um, so there you go, folks. Fascinating evidence uh, of a crater, uh, of a meteorite crater in 2004. Um, they now have the location for it. Um, you might think why they didn't go and investigate all this in 2004, but again, the limited resources there, um, the triangulation wasn't accurate enough to uh, track this down. They now have it some... Uh, 11 years later, um, but there you go, folks. A meteorite in Antarctica, incredibly scientifically interesting. If they do find fragments, they can certainly tell you what the meteorite was found. Of it. Uh, but they do hit frequently, and few of them are big enough to make any damage occur. Uh, they do mostly land in remote areas. Uh, few of them are big enough to even worth talking about. Uh, but they may be able to recover some material from this, and... Uh, uh, please God, we'll see how it goes, but, well, there you go, the Antarctica uh, meteorite that hit in 2004, uh, all roads looking to uh, uh, more research on this for sure. You can check out this short little video clip uh, on location in Antarctica with a little bit of testimony from the people involved. We were on a routine fl uh, measuring flight uh on a profile to the north, near to the coast, and we were flying above a small ice shelf. I wanted to measure the uh, variations in uh, gravitational field strength, magnetic field strength, and uh, using a radar system that's installed on the airplane to measure the thickness of the ice down to the bedrock. So I uh, looked out of the window and saw some unusual stru structures on the surface of the ice that were some woken ice looking like icebergs which which is very unusual on a normally flat ice shelf surrounded with a large wing shaped circular structure. Well what Christian went uh, about doing after he returned uh, as well as talking to us about what he'd seen was to uh, just look into records of uh, infrasound measurements. Christian stumbled on a, a paper from 2004 in which infrasound had been used to locate uh, an impact event in this region um, from something the size of a house coming down through the atmosphere and hitting the ice shelf. I've never seen something like that before on an ice shelf. If they'd flown directly over the structure at the time uh, on the 20th, then it may have been that they wouldn't actually have noticed it. Of the first thoughts that it might be an impact structure. Impact from? From something from space, like a meteorite. 